All right, so 10 must have items to consider getting as a beginner as you're building up your running kit. Getting to a running routine can be a daunting task and knowing where to start of what items you should get now and what items you could eventually invest in later can make all the difference in whether or not you want to stick with this sport or not. One caveat I want to mention now is that running is a cheap and accessible sport. There are, of course, some nice to have items, but you don't need to invest all that money to get into this sport as a hobby. And so with that out of the way, here are my top 10 things that I would get as a beginner runner. All right, number one, a good pair of running shoes. Having a good pair of running shoes can make all the difference in your running journey to ensure that you minimize any sort of injury that may occur. Running shoes are designed in a way that they are lightweight, high cushioning, especially in the heel and the toe, and they are typically made out of um, a mesh that uh, has proper airflow to ensure that your feet remain dry. Now, pro tip, when you look at having a pair of running shoes and you find one that you really love, I would absolutely recommend considering getting two pairs and swapping them every other run. Remember, running is a sport that's very high impact and you want to be really kind in your joints and your knees, but running shoes could also be expensive. So making sure that you have a pair of running shoes you really love. And if you get two pair, you can rotate them every other run. And what that'll do, that'll help your shoes dry uh, throughout the day, as well as ensure that the cushioning is able to uh, rest and uh, um, essentially inflate back up. Now, typically running shoes need to be retired somewhere between 300 and 500 miles. Strava has an awesome tool where you can track your mileage per shoe and will even notify you when you should potentially go ahead and uh, replace those or retire those shoes. All right, so a fun challenge. How many shoes do you think you're going to retire this year if you are about to get into running? For me, the amount of miles I'm going to be running for my current training plan for the ultra marathon and then the mar my next marathon in December, I'm going to probably average about eight to nine pairs of running shoes this year, which is kind of crazy to think about. So I am absolutely rotating my shoes every other run to ensure that I can get as many miles out of them as absolutely possible. Now, how do you know your shoes need to be retired? Comment below if you want to see a specific video on that, as well as some hidden tips and tricks to ensure that you can extend the life of your shoes past that 300 to 500 mile mark. All right, number two, comfortable and moisture whip clothing. You want to ensure you're wearing clothing that's not going to absorb all your sweat and it's going to stay dry throughout your run. And so you don't need to spend a ton of money on clothing right away. You don't have to spend any more than 10 or $15 on a t-shirt. Same thing with shorts and socks can be rather cheap as well. But once you know and you are convinced that you want to get into this sport long term, and I don't think that's going to take too long, um, consider getting clothing that you really love, some brands you might really love, because what that'll do is, for me at least, um, I just started doing this and uh, I really want to put those clothes on. So it makes me want to run more. And so I was excited to put on um, um, anything that I get from Nike or Viore. Um, I have some Adidas as well. And so for a long time, I would put on just old raggedy clothes and I didn't really feel good wearing them. And so now that I have clothes that I actually really love and I love putting on, it makes me want to go out for a run even more. <laughs> All right, number three, having a water bottle or some sort of hydration pack. I actually recommend getting both. Let me explain why. Because when you are getting into runs of 13 plus miles, you are going to want to have a larger hydration pack with at least about a liter, if not a liter and a half of water. Now, when you're going on runs that are, say, you know, three or four miles, you probably don't need water unless you feel more comfortable with that. Um, any runs that I have between eight to 13 miles, I'll normally bring my Nathan's water bottle um, that typically has a, um, a pouch where I can put my gels, or my keys, or my phone. Uh, and typically, I'll have BP and electrolytes in there mainly because I really love their salted watermelon um, and any runs over 13 miles I'll typically have my Nathan's hydration pack on because I need a little bit more water for those runs in particular. Uh, pro tip, water is extremely important, whether you're an athlete or not. However, another major necessity uh, is salt, aka electrolytes. You're going to sweat a ton. And when you do sweat, you typically will average about 1,700 milligrams of salt per hour. And that's obviously based on um, uh, the person and the uh, uh, exertion of that specific exercise. Salt will support relaxing your muscles and can lead less to cramps when you're running. If you've ever raced on the marathon before, you've definitely have heard runners deal salt at a specific salt station where they typically they'll hand out um, uh, salt tablets to runners to help reduce any sort of like cramping or um, allow your muscles just to relax a little bit on your runs because you're losing so much salt because it's, you're typically out there for three to five hours. So I definitely recommend test out some salt products out there. There's salt tablets, you can use Noon. I really like the BP and electrolytes, but there's a lot of options out there and you want to see what your body reacts to the most and positive way. <music> 
Alright, number four, a running watch or a wearable tracker. Now, this is more of a splurge and it's not a necessity to have right away. But what I love about them is that they will track your pace your heart rate, your distance, and nowadays a lot more. I'm actually going a little too extreme. I have a, a Whoop on one and I have Garmin on the other. Uh, I just entered the Garmin ecosystem and actually I'm going to uh, create a video comparing the two and ultimately which one I'm going to um, go with for a longer term. Uh, so stay tuned for that video in particular. If you're just getting started, Strava is just a great platform to use on a, every single run that you take because that will track your mileage and you don't necessarily need it wearable. Now, uh, most wearables will um, collaborate or pair with Strava really easily. So once you decide to get one, uh, you can keep your Strava profile and it'll sync really easily. Um, what I love about my Garmin particularly right now is that um, I take my phone, I have it on my, my arm uh, and I don't have to touch my phone at all. I can just hit one button and it starts my run. Once I'm done, I hit the button again and it actually goes straight to the Strava platform and it will go ahead and uh, record all of my uh, metrics uh, on that platform. And what I love about the wearables is that typically their database will hold uh, all of your past data so you can see how you're trending and how your performance is either uh, increasing, hopefully, or uh, plateauing. Uh, so it'll really help you track how you can better prepare as a runner and better recover yourself if you are maybe not necessarily recovering in the way you should. Recently, I have been really focused on my heart rate and ensuring that I'm using my oxygen efficiently. So having a wearable really makes that that much easier. <laughs> All right, number five, I had her visor. Hydrovisor is honestly imperative for me as a runner. I just went for a run recently and I didn't take one. I instantaneously regretted it for the amount of sweat that went into my eyes, but also more importantly, sun protection. If you're running on a hot day or any sort of sun um, coming out through clouds or even on a gray day, you risk sun exposure. And so having a visor or a hat is a really great tool to have. Having a hat will allow you to ensure that you are properly protected by the sun and they are typically made out of um, a moisture wicking material as well. So they'll be able to keep sweat out of your eyes and ensure that you um, don't have that distraction while you're running. All right, number six, fuel. There's so many things on the market, whether it's gels or tablets or chews. And if you're just getting in running, you might think, oh, I don't really need this right now. But one thing I regret the most is not actually testing these products sooner than later. I didn't actually start testing until I knew that I was going to be training for a marathon. And even at that point, I never actually tested them until I was on longer runs, like 10 or 13 or 14 miles. And uh, when you're out there and you really need to replenish your body, and then you put something in your body that doesn't agree with your system, uh, because not every single uh, piece of fuel out on the market will interact with your system the same way it might interact with your buddy or uh, uh, with somebody else you might know. And so you want to be able to test these. And I highly recommend testing them on shorter runs and seeing how your body reacts to them. Uh, you don't want to do it in the long run. Trust me. A lot of gels vary greatly, both in texture and flavor. Some are very apple sassy, while some are uh, rather gooey. And so test them, see what you like, what you don't like. Um, and also remember too, some of them come with caffeine and a lot of them have carbohydrates or electrolytes. Remember the carbohydrates and electrolytes are really great added supplements to these gels because carbohydrates will give you the energy that you need and electrolytes will allow your muscles to relax and uh, that extra salt is definitely necessary as you are sweating a ton in the sport. <laughs> Number seven, reflective vests or lights. More often than not, you will be running in the dark if you don't, especially if you're working a full time job or you have other commitments. I tend to get out there anywhere between 4 30 in the morning and 6 in the morning. And, you know, during winter, it's pretty much dark outside. It's just me and the coyotes, and the coyotes are no fun, trust me. Uh, and, you know, I do run on well lit trails and roads, but the reality of it is that even well lit environments, not all runners or cyclists or drivers will be able to see you. So having proper lights, whether you clip them onto your shirt or your hat uh, or your pouch, you want to make sure that you are well lit and easily seeable. So other safety recommendations would be some handheld mace. Uh, and there's also a product called the Birdie. Uh, handheld mace, they make them for runners, uh, easily fits in your pocket. And a product called Birdie, essentially you pull this device and uh, it's a loud alarm and has some flashing lights. So it draws attention to you. This is a very great tool that hopefully you never have to use, but it's peace of mind to have it on you. So definitely recommend checking those out. I'll link those below so you can take a look.
Number eight, a running belt or an armband. I personally use quad lock on my phone. Uh, and so that actually has a specific running band where it clicks right in and uh, I'm on my way. My wife really likes using a running belt. There's some really cheap ones on Amazon. You can invest in a nicer one later on. Uh, but you really want to have something where uh, you strategize what you are taking with you, uh, whether it's your keys, your phone, gels, cell tablets, as we discussed earlier in this video, anything you might need to carry on you. You want to make sure that it's proper weight distribution because you don't want all like weight on one side because that's just going to be really uncomfortable in any sort of run, whether it's one mile or 10 miles. Both have pros and cons is you want to really test what works for you, whether it's armband or uh, a pouch. Uh, just make sure that anything you do pick, you can get your items easily. So what I mean by that is that you might want to grab your phone quickly to change your music or potentially call somebody or take a cool picture. And so you want to make sure that you can grab those items very easily uh, because if you can't, it just gets really annoying, especially when you're tired and sweaty. So I uh, really consider the easy use. All right, number nine, this is going to be a surprising one, but a yoga mat. This is something I wouldn't have even recommend like two years ago, but I suffer with a lot of lower back pain. And pretty much the reason is that I don't stretch enough. Uh, and so um, this is like one thing that I'm very focused on. And I tend to stretch and do longer poses, whether it's uh, um, pigeon or warrior for anywhere up to three to five minutes per pose. And when you're doing that, you want cushioning on your knees uh, and on your hips and in your forearms. Uh, and so having something that you can lay on and use on a daily basis is just honestly really important. I went for a more um, higher cushion mat, uh, but you can get a really basic yoga mat if you like. Uh, both accomplish essentially the same thing. It just depends on how much cushioning you really want to have. If you need structure with your stretching sessions, one platform I would recommend is, is called Pliability. Pliability is a really cool company that has thousands of stretching sessions and focuses on long holds for each stretch. You can actually filter what parts of your body you want to focus on. So I mainly focus on my entire lower half. Um, I will go ahead and filter it uh, based on uh, what will help my hamstrings, my calves, uh, my lower back. Uh, and that's how I typically program it. And you could do anywhere from a 10 minute uh, session all up to about a 45 minute session, which I think they call it a warrior session. They are not for the weak of minds. Um, holding a stretch for five to six minutes is kind of insane, but it allows you to discipline your mind and just really just uh, embrace it. So a uh, really cool platform to check out if you're interested. <laughs> All right, number 10, headphones. Whether you're getting out there for 20 minutes or two hours, you can absolutely lose motivation if you're just listening to the wind in your ears. Now, if you are the type of person who could just go out for a long run and not listen to anything, you're on a different level. I highly respect that. I personally cannot do that. I love building out playlists, and recently I've been challenging myself to listen to more audiobooks. I'm not a classic reader, so um, that really helps me uh, be able to flex that part of my mind and uh, switch things up. So typically I'll listen to an audiobook every four or five runs, and then when I'm doing speed work, I'll listen to you know my hardcore playlists. Now you can go for some classic AirPods. A lot of runners really enjoy those. Um, but I do recommend if you could afford it, go wireless for whatever headphones you decide on, uh, just because it'll be ease of use and uh, you're not going to be attached to any wires. My number one recommendation for headphones is Aftershocks. I really love their open run edition, and I've been rocking them for about three years now with uh, no issues with battery life or anything like that. Now, two reasons why I decided on this brand specifically are that they are open ear bone conduction headphones. This allows you to be totally aware of your surroundings while listening to your favorite jams. This has saved me countless times being able to hear a group of cyclists approaching from behind cars and other runners. This feature makes these headphones some of the safest on the market. And even with the additional noise around you, the sound quality is honestly amazing and I haven't been disappointed. The other factor is that these headphones can last up to eight hours. Uh, this is imperative if you're going to be getting into longer runs or races, and AirPods just won't cut it. Uh, I remember running one of my first races with AirPods, and they died even three quarters of the way through, and I had to run in silence. You do not want to be that person. I hope this list of 10 must-have items will help you build out your beginner running kit. Just remember, if you're going to take anything away from this uh, video, a good pair of running shoes, and make sure you're taking care of your muscles and stretching properly. Uh, please learn from my mistakes. Uh, if you have other items that you really like in your running kit, I'd love to hear about those and comment those below. I'll see you soon.